at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. In this particular session, we dive into an interview that looks at youth investment opportunities. In studio, I'm joined with Elizabeth Nkuku. She is an invest, uh, investment advisor and she does a lot of other things. So uh, before we start this conversation, I would like to uh, quote World Bank. And according to World Bank, most African countries have a low selling so a uh, saving and investment culture of around 17 percent of their gross domestic uh, product uh, products that's according to world bank so with no further ado like us to dive into this conversation that we look at investment opportunities that are there untapped opportunities that is uh, that is for the young people welcome so much welcome to uh uh, why do you prefer Elizabeth? Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling? How is your day starting off? I think good. Mm -hmm. uh, good to be here. Good to share insights and learn um, a few things here and there. I keep saying that most of us start understanding investment much later. I wish this could have been taught to us a little bit earlier mm -hmm. because then you create a culture whereby you are ready to grow. But um, we interacted with the investment was really, let's pass the exam yeah, <laughs> for those of us who are lucky to be in business. Oh, yes. Yeah. So yeah. That's so true because it's also mm. not uh, mandatory. It's not there in, in when it comes to uh, our school system, you know, talk about finances and uh, what it involves. Uh, for you, what, what growing up, what was your relationship with money or how were you brought up? What sort of environment were you brought up when it comes to you relating with finances? Were you the spender or more of a saver? Actually, none of the two. Mm -hmm. I was, I, I, for me, I looked at money as a way of getting to what I needed to do. I remember this time, I, I, used, to, I used to school in Eldoret, my girls, and we were given some cash by the old president, mm -hmm. Mr. Moy, and I was like, oh, yeah, I can buy everybody a pair of shoe at home. So um, for me, I have always looked at money as a way to get to what you like or what you want. But now, looking back, I should have maybe created a culture of more savings as I even try to grow the rest. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, uh, compared to your generation, to now the generation whereby I believe you will have uh, your mother. Uh, so, what sort of uh, difference is there when you uh, do you talk about do you talk about money with your kids? Uh, and uh, what, what are you doing differently compared to back in the days during your time? So one of the things is really to show them that first uh, you have to earn because irrespective of the f whether they want something that I can afford, we have to delay, you know, delayed gratification because mm -hmm. I believe that it's you knowing that I can wait for this, that is going to help uh, going forward. Then the other thing is you have to save and put your money somewhere that is multiplying. So I have a daughter who is 13 years. Uh, she has a money market fund account, and uh, every time I ask her for money, she's always like, but he said, you should not touch your money. So it, it creates some sort of uh, balance for me, yeah, and starting it. And, and right now, I think for people who are enlightened, there are options that you can tap into even for your kids so that they can actually see the benefits. I think uh, some time back, it was all about maybe putting money in a picky bank mm -hmm. not really working for you it's really mm -hmm. saving but mm -hmm. now how do you convert that saving to something that is growing even as you as, as you're really doing nothing how mm -hmm. do you make your money work for you mm -hmm. elizabeth you mentioned something very important you spoke about mmf the money market fund tell us more about that what it is um <clears throat> so what the, the, let me take a step back. There yes. are two ways of investing. Yes. So you can actually invest formally, whereby mm -hmm. you're engaging the capital market players, or you can actually just invest informally with your, with your, with your girls, the Chama uh, or uh, the Miru Ground. So when you go to formal investments, a lot has happened. I think there's a lot of reduction that is coming in, mm -hmm. and the capital markets are have a lot of products that people can engage in. So one of them is a unit trust. And unit trust, that's how we find the money market fund. So unit trust is basically um, lumped funds or pulled funds that people can um, buy into. They're usually open-ended that you can come and get out at any time and you're getting your money in. Um, the returns are largely derived by what is, uh, what is the investment behind it. So for a money market fund, the behind investments are money market instruments. But money market instruments is things like deposit, treasury bills, commercial papers, mm -hmm. and all that. They are short term in nature for mm -hmm. money market fund. Your mm -hmm. capital is protected. And uh, 
I think uh, I've seen a lot of uh, innovation as well with automation. You can dial in, open an account, and withdraw your money anywhere it is. So a lot of innovation going that end. All right. When you talk about the money market fund, what is the initial amount that one can get into it? For as low as a thousand, you can okay. actually be able to invest. So, and it's a thousand that people you can top up five hundred um, using your Mpesa. So, the. I think the thing is to understand who is the provider and how the level of automation and what is their minimum. Mm -hmm. So that is on the lower end. There are those, uh, there are those providers who are doing up to a thousand, but there are those who are high end. They're looking at a, hand, at a million, uh, minimum of one million. So again, it all depends on what you're looking for and what you have. But for me, I think starting with even one thousand, learning the process before you even jump into more makes a difference. All right. Uh, let's look at, uh, I'd like us to shift gear a little bit because uh, most of the people were watching us are the young people and uh, uh, in most cases when we, we, you know, immediately graduate, we're always on the lookout to just uh, searching for jobs, the white collar jobs to be specific. So um, my, our mentality is on that particular lens. So how can we shift that culture to a state whereby we are not just thinking about uh, uh, looking for a job, but also creating job opportunities for not only yourself but other people around us. Um, it is. It's good to be employed. I keep mm -hmm. saying that if mm -hmm. you have that opportunity to get employed, it helps create um, a system of stability. And um, when when most of us are leaving college, we really did not have clear ways of. This is how my day is going to be. You only were, were structured based on the classes the way they were. So if you're lucky to get a job, it's definitely a good place to go. But even as you go to that job, how, what difference are you making other than just um, do this A, B, C, D, what, what difference are you making? If you're not so lucky to get a job immediately, I think the, the starting point is to ask yourself, what do I have and what do I, what am I passionate about and how can I monetize it? Mm -hmm. I think with this time where there is a lot of gig, gigs that one can do right for, for people, um, start this Biashara, you can actually look at that Biashara and say, let's say something as simple as um, hairdressing, how do I do it the very best? So that the day I do that hairdressing, to one person, they will definitely send me a lot of referrals and over time you'll actually command your space. Um, so for me the thing is, what is it that you're passionate about? What do you like? If I like baking, how can I monetize this baking for me? How can I make it? How can I make a living out of it? Do, do that business as if your life depends on it. Because over time you actually learn and as you learn you can actually command a premium for what you're doing. So the only challenge I see is um, most of us wants to start today and become successful tomorrow. It does not work. Getting you have rich to quickly. <laughs> Getting rich quickly. It does not work. <laughs> you have to pay the price. You have to sweat. You have to cry. You have to do everything for you to stand out. So it's just fully knowing that it's a journey mm -hmm. and do not despair and be consistent at what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Success will come. Okay, success will come. Another mm -hmm. challenge from what you've said is, uh, I believe most young people, they have these different ideas they want to get into business uh, and they have the fear of losses and not knowing when or how. What would you say in terms of uh, describing uh, the difference between investing blindly and actually taking a risk? I think there's always a disconnect there. All investments is taking a risk, so it's a calculated risk. Mm -hmm. what, I, what I find, if you're investing blindly, most of the time it's fooling the crowd. I come mm -hmm. and tell you, know what, uh, I made money, I doubled my money over this period of time without really knowing how did they exactly make, make their money. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at investments, the first thing is understand the business that you're investing in, how you're going to make money and how, you, how is it going to turn to profitability. Because if you're not able to know this is how I'm going to make money, you cannot even be able to drive yourself. Mm -hmm. So before you invest in anything, just to ask that question, how are you making money and how are you monetizing that money? How am I able to collect it? If there is a doubt in terms of I cannot explain to you, this is how I'm going to grow my sales and this is how I'm going to be profitable, don't take that risk. The biggest challenge I see is someone will come and tell you, you know what, give me your 100,000 and you know what, I'll give you 200,000 in three months. Mm -hmm. hey, that are sounds they, a good deal. Are they magicians? <laughs> How will we be able to do that? So uh -huh. it's, just, it's just knowing that there is no easy way to doubling your money. Mm -hmm. All the investments are what I call fundamentally driven. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand what drives their returns. And then once you understand what drives their return, 
then you can be able to sit back and say, okay, fine, I will, I can wait. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are a couple of uh, untapped uh, investment opportunities that you've seen in the market that you feel the youth are not really uh, getting grips on on these opportunities? That every time you look at uh, these untapped uh, ventures, you feel like if most pe most young people would actually uh, jump into these particular opportunities, they would actually uh, gain more. For me, I'll, I'll approach it from, I'm largely a capital markets person. Mm -hmm. So I would go back to the passive investments. Mm -hmm. So most of us will make money. So let's say, for example, I have done my ratings, I've been paid. And you see that money comes in very, it's very erratic. So I don't, I don't save that money. I don't put that money in a money market fund. I don't put ma that money in an equity fund. I don't put ma that money maybe in shares or treasury bills. So people do, are not taking advantage of the available formal ways of investing. Uh, and I believe it's because it looks sophisticated. You know, you're like, ah, you sit a So you end up not even engaging with the process. Because mm -hmm. I, you see an investment, the result of consistency. Mm -hmm. They need to be consistent for you to see the, to reap the results. Mm -hmm. Most of the time when you invest in a venture that you will be able to get the money or tap into the money, that consistency is, consistency is not there. So what I believe is, uh, people being able to tap into the formal ways of investing, whether I'm employed or not employed, at least I know that I am investing towards something. And the way to do that, I think, is to more education. Mm -hmm. I, I think like what you're doing today, mm -hmm. it's very important because people end up knowing other than um, what, other than maybe lending money to in a table banking format, I can actually put away my money aside and get something better. Mm -hmm. and. I can access it when I really, really need it. All right, and uh, another another issue that young people are facing is uh, identifying credible uh, platform to actually invest in. There's so many uh, organizations that are coming up, especially on social media. We have iGenius, we have iPerverse Bleeds that say that invest your, uh, invest your money here and in a couple of few days, you know, your money has multiplied. And they use influencers that actually, when you look at their lifestyle, they're living, they're living large, they're yes. wearing, um, brands, uh, different uh, designers. So you feel, you, you feel, you know, I would like to be part of this uh, organization and make such amount of money. How do you weigh on, or rather, how do you identify credibility that these people are actually genuine when it comes to investment? Again, investment is fundamentals. Mm -hmm. What is driving these investments? Can you be able to spot and say, you know what, I understand why these people are investing their money and this is how it's coming back. Because ah. if you're not able to point out that, mm -hmm. definitely, as long as you have a question mark, then there's a challenge. Because there is no magic in investments. It is basically how are you driving returns? How, what is your underlying asset? If you cannot be able to see this person invest in this company and this is how they're going to get money and this is how the money will come back, it's a red flag. Mm -hmm. So, and then the other thing is there is basically the way you can look at the returns. Someone who is going to give you returns that's out of this world, you know, anything that would be, I would even say more than, you almost like 50% return on a one year, it is highly unlikely. So it is good to relatively look at how do I understand what kind of returns they, that someone can get real, on a realistic basis. Then um, I think there is these other things about maybe the cryptocurrencies, the currencies Bitcoin. themselves, bitcoins and all that. Do you understand how, and when you're getting into some of those risky investments, mm -hmm. are you, what is your risk level? So when you're doing investment, it's, it's more of about looking at yourself retrospectively and say, what is it that I understand and I stand for? And if this money went barely up, will I survive to see tomorrow or how will my life look like? So when you're getting into some of these risky, as, uh, assets, just make sure that it's a really small portion of your money, such that even if it, it didn't make it, if you just lost the money, your life still will not change. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, while from anyone who is watching this conversation is a young person, they feel like, I still have time, you know, I'm in my maybe a late, uh, early 30s, I feel, I feel I'm still, I, have, I still have time, maybe I'll start thinking about investment when I get to 40s or 50s during my retirement. Why should you start investing when you're young? Um, investing is discipline. Mm -hmm. If you're not disciplined today, you'll not become disciplined in 40, when you've turned 40 or when you turn 50. 
There'll be less, definitely lessons that you'll have learned along the way, mm -hmm. but most of the time you don't change a lot later on in, the, in your years. Then life is unpredictable. So today maybe you have a good job. And since you have a good job, if you don't put the money away today, if COVID happens, again, what happens to you? You know, a lot of things, I think COVID was a wake-up call for most of us, whereby I don't have an emergency uh, kit or I have an emergency kit eh, that is six months of my living expenses. I am laid off, so what happens? So I think you have to start early. You create the culture. And also there is uh, what is called the, the magic of compounding. The earlier you start, the better it is for you mm -hmm. because then your money is working for you. So any of these uh, big investors, it's just that, you know, like they are good at stock picks. They're just like consistent at what they are doing. So you have to create uh, a way that I will lose and I will, I will learn and then reinvest again. Yeah. yeah. So you're trying to tell us that we should start thinking about retirement as early as we start like getting yesterday. like income. <laughs> <laughs> you should start you should start thinking about retirement uh -huh. as as the first time you get your paycheck. Ah. And not retirement in the context of maybe I li really need to leave a job and I need this money, but wholesomely how will my life be in retirement? Mm -hmm. What will be my everyday sort of lifestyle? Mm -hmm. So you are not looking about money at money only, you're just looking at when I wake up in the morning, how will the world look like? And then start investing today because if I retire at 60, I'm still very energetic. If you look at 60 year olds these days, they are very energetic. So even if I have money, so now, so investing is not necessarily investing in a business. It could be even investing in self. Mm -hmm. So I'm saving towards my master's, my PhD, so that the day I retire, I can actually take a gig on consultancy. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So you have to think about it broadly. It's not only an issue of, I want to get an income. Okay. Yeah. Speaking about consulting, you run a consulting uh, firm. Take us to that. What do you guys do and what kind of services do you offer? Okay. Um, at least consulting, we're divided into two. So we have people who are hard, uh, focused on individuals. And on individuals, what we do, we do two things. So first of all, we train you. We go through that training. And then after the training, we graduate into our wealth management. And what we ensure is that once we have given you the basics, this is what you need to do. And the training really captures up things like how do I, what is almost like deciding what is my self status in terms of finances? How do I do my goals? Uh, are they realistic? And what do I have to meet these goals? What are the investment options that I have? And how do I select who to walk the journey with? <laughs> then once you're done with that, we have to create, help you create a portfolio. One of the things we want is that your wealth has to outlive you because we do not want you at living well and then thereafter, maybe for example, God forbid you pass on, your kids are fighting. So we want to make sure that there is order in what you do. So we shall take you through even uh, retirement, uh, retirement planning, we shall take you through succession planning and estate planning, taxation, all that is what you do for people on the individual side. Then. If you look at the statistics, um, for you, for both of the people who create wealth, it's likely through business. Mm -hmm. So then the question becomes, how do I create a business that is attractive to me? I'm making money, but as I'm even making money, I can be able to, uh, to bring in more people to actually uh, grow it and take it to the next level. So what are the key foundations that I need? So again, we take you through a training. It's called a Business Structuring Masterclass, whereby we shall ask, go through with you, what are the key things? What are the key pillars? I need the right people. I need the right processes. I need the, I need the right finances. I, how do I put all this together so that my business will outlive me again? As a founder, most of the time, we do not want you to be there forever. Mm -hmm. How ca can this thing stand on, your, on its own without you? And what will that entail? So we take you through that, that course and then provide the various uh, services that you'll need, basic support like uh, accounting, um, taxation, filing, and all basic support and, the, uh, and registration, then transactional advisory. I want to sell this business or I want to fundraise. What do I do? How do I put together all mm -hmm. this thing? Mm -hmm. Then we shall take you through that process and do that for you as transactional advisors. And then finally, you have done everything, but it's, you feel like I need to, this, it's time for me to revamp my business. Mm -hmm. I need to change it. So we shall take you through business reengineering because we believe that um, with things, things change. And mm -hmm. so as things change, then what am I doing to make sure that I'm catching up with the change? Mm -hmm. So those are the two buckets, so business and individuals. And for the aim is to make sure that what you're doing today outlives you. Mm -hmm. 
we do succession not, part of it. A lot well. of succession there. Uh, so one of your quotes uh, is that financial peace is in the acquisition of stuff. It's a learning to live on less than you make so you can give money back and have money to invest. All right. So here's the thing. Most young people, we don't live within our means. We want to live large. We want, uh, we want to be bowling on social media. We want everyone to know that I got a Fendi bag, I got Zara, I got any sort of brand, uh, any sort of design or brand or anything out there. And even we desire that, and we go to the extent of just not being able to live within our means. How important is that? Um, I think this this age of social media. It brings its own challenges. People, w you want to be seen to be the person who is going to the very best places, and th that's a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. But but at the end of the day, when you sleep, you know you have you have an opportunity to think about yourself, and you're like, yeah, even me, no, this one doesn't, it can't, ha I can't work like this. Mm -hmm. And that's why the debt, pro the debt, debt becomes a big problem. I, mean, I think there's a lot of debt issues, and the digital lending has not helped the situation, mm -hmm. and. Some people even lose their job because of that. If your boss is called that you haven't paid, uh, then there is a, a challenge. So my view is, as an individual, understand yourself and accept yourself and things fall into place. So the, the, it's how do you cal create a culture of contentment mm -hmm. and um, just self-acceptance again. So do not compete with anyone. Everybody has their path. And today, if you invest, whatever you, you think that you're missing out, imagine you'll be able to own, uh, to earn, to own it and actually live a better life. Mm. But it's, at times it's difficult. So I, I, I keep saying that it's a balance because I cannot invest everything for me not to live today. You have to make sure that you're putting aside. And there is basic, a basic rule that you can do. You can just say 10 to 20% of my money, I will first put it away. Okay. And the best way to put it away let it not hit your account. And if it hits your account, have a standing order. Because the moment you have access to it, you'll tell yourself, I'll do it tomorrow. So once you have those basic rules, 10% of my money will go to investment. It doesn't matter what it is. And then this other one, there's the 50% um, will go to my basics. If I'm able to squeeze my basics such that I've saved on transport or I have saved on food, then I can buy that thing that I wanted. But also, have a 10 20 percent that you can say let me tell myself poly on this one so that you don't also feel guilty that you're missing out on stuff mm -hmm. but if you have those clear bucket mm -hmm. buckets at times it's difficult but you can just give um you, you can actually be able to demarcate them mm -hmm. so that the money that is that is for food it's in a different maybe card account and yeah all right, we're still in the early year and people have goals and uh, uh, they have virtually put down a bucket list of the things they want to achieve. And when it comes to finances and savings, yeah, what is the best uh, of, or, or rather tips to go about it? You mentioned an 80-20 rule when you were actually earlier on. So take us through that, the best saving uh, uh, way to go about it, like tips. So... Um the starting point is, mm -hmm. I keep saying, understand yourself and where you want to go. Mm -hmm. And not compare yourself with anyone. Yeah, it's you, Elizabeth, this is what you have. Mm -hmm. Be real to yourself. I think when you're thinking about finances, the starting point is honesty. Mm -hmm. And not honesty to you, it's honesty to myself because I need to be, I cannot be saying that I want to achieve X and I can say, there is no way I can start. There is no way to even, I want to drive a car or I want to upgrade my car, but mm -hmm. I'm looking at, I don't have a salary maybe. Uh, I have kids to take to school. My reality cannot get me to buying a car. And once you see that uh, that is not where I'm going to go, then you start with where you are. So understand where you are. Understand, do your balance sheet. Do your profit and loss. I always say that treat yourself like a company. Mm -hmm. Once you start looking at yourself like a company, you real, re, reality checks in. Because if my, in revenue, my income is 100,000, mm -hmm. my expenses at 120, it's die work. There's just as much that it will come in there, it's it just mm -hmm. lipukas. So mm -hmm. you just need to make sure that you understand. Then look at your assets. There are those assets that you have that are not, they're not generating anything, they're not appreciating. Don't have attachments, just sell and just put the money in something that is going to make sense to you. So once you have done that, you have done your reality check, you have done your goals, you know, this is what I need to achieve. And you're very realistic with your goals. 
ask yourself what are the other, what are the means and ways of getting to where I'm going. The means and ways is what are the available investment options that I have. And remember, not only in terms of money, I also need time. If, I, if for example, I wanted to start a business and I'm full I'm full time employed, it may not maybe be making sense because I have to employ someone who also maybe is not that um, trusted. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure that you're looking at your resources in terms of money, in terms of time, in terms of relationships, in terms of people, and then saying, what can I do? Once you have understood your options, select the one that gets you there. Mm -hmm. Then things will change. We, you see, um, the thing the thing is um, when you put when we start the year, we want to start with these goals and I want to achieve them. Mm -hmm. But we are human; things happen. That's so true. be real and just say, you know what? I thought I would get uh, to a million. I didn't. Mm -hmm. So what do I do? Mm -hmm. And then get corrective action. All right. As we wind up, I'd like us to look at the short-term uh, investment opportunities for young people that they can get into and uh, you know as you mentioned Allah, there's no getting rich real quick so you have to be patient about it so what a couple of short-term investment opportunity that will require minimal uh, starting capital I think you can in my view mm -hmm. you can start with if, if, you have, if you have if you have no capital you are getting money that is coming in tripling in mm -hmm. put it in your money market fund that mm -hmm. will start okay. if you want to start a business I think I think the easiest businesses to start is what is pa you are passionate about and you care for. I think uh, looking at the pain area in the area that you are in, let's say for example, you um, or you're where? where a place where there are many people in the market. So, or there is like a place where, where maybe a, a car wash or something. Those people maybe need food. What, how, what is the easiest and cheapest way for you to provide that food? Because you're sure they will get hungry at some point such that it doesn't require a lot of capital. Mm -hmm. If, for example, you're passionate about fashion and design, I think with social media today, you can actually market and go buy and deliver. So you do not have to have a lot. Mm -hmm. But do that which your heart really cares for. Because if you do something because driven, 100% driven by money, you won't do it very well. And it will, people, your customers will say. So if you're good and you would like to say, let me say, for example, you want to get into um, hairdressing, mm -hmm. Just take that thing that you like, because if you do something that you're like, ah, in pesa too, even you'll complain when you're creating, yes. when you look at as a client. So honored to. To to. So don't stretch, just mm -hmm. do that which drives you. All right. Yeah. Okay, so Elizabeth, as we wind up, if anyone wants to reach out to you uh, to keep the conversation going, I would like to join, I'll reach out for advice when it comes to investment, even financial advice, how can they reach out to you? So we do free webinars every Wednesday ah, nice. at 7.30. Uh -huh. So tomorrow, the whole of this month we are doing about debt and debt. Uh, we have a debt series mm -hmm. because we believe that we have to get right in terms of debt. So we shall de be demystifying debt tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then we shall do how do you, you find yourself in a debt situation. How do you get yourself out of it? Then how do you can you use debt to leverage your business and grow as an individual? So every Wednesday at 7.30, you uh, join us. Follow me on Facebook. I always mm -hmm. give tips on that. Okay. Every 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 Monday and every Friday, I actually do investment tips as well. Uh, through so please uh, subscribe to our mailing list. Just go to my website. My website is www.elizabethgoku.com. Subscribe and every week twice we shall be giving you tips on investments. You can follow me on Instagram and on LinkedIn. Again, if you want to chat. Please don't send me a message. You can send me on a WhatsApp message on my number. It's on my website. Or you can write 0728-600-576. We shall get back to you. Or email us on info at elizabethgoku.com. Yes, Elizabeth. Uh, Elizabeth, it has, it has an N, right? Yes. Elizabeth NLF Kuku.com on their website. Right? Yes. Thank you very much for creating time to be with us, Elizabeth, and taking us through uh, youth investment opportunities. We appreciate you and Karibu Sana. I will be part of the webinar tomorrow. It's tomorrow, right? It's tomorrow. All I'll right. send you a WhatsApp so Thank that you can subscribe. Much. All right. Guys, keep it right here at Why in the Morning. Remember the hashtag to use. It's hashtag Entrepreneurship Tuesday. We have so much coming your way. So stay locked at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. At Y254 channel is where we at across all our social media handle. We'll be right back.